everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 15.4 RC, or Release Candidate. This is the final version that's released to the developers and public beta testers, and if Apple finds no additional issues, it's the same version they'll release to the public. Now, it came in at a very large 5.25 gigabytes, that's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it was about 5 gigabytes or so on all the devices in this video, from the iPad Pro to the iPhone 6S Plus, iPhone 11, and iPhone 10. Now it will be a large install. Anytime you go from a beta to a final version or a public version, it fully reinstalls the OS and then just manages storage after that. Along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 15.4 RC, watch OS 8.5 RC, TV OS 15.4 RC, HomePod OS 15.4 RC and Mac OS 12.3 RC. So all of those are available now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 19E241, and this will be the final version released to the public unless Apple finds something additional they need to resolve before releasing it to the public. So if you're a beta tester or developer, I probably wouldn't remove that beta profile just yet. Now this update did not include a modem update. So if you're wondering if there's a modem update from beta five to the release candidate, there's not a modem update. However, if you're coming from the public version of 15.3.1 to this, when it comes out to the public, then you will have a modem update. Now, as far as the first new features and changes, when you go into software update, this is the first change you'll see. You'll now be able to install this over cellular data if you weren't before. In some countries, we had the option and you can see what it looks like here. In India, for example, you were able to install using cellular data in many areas. Now you can do this everywhere. So it gives you the option when you go to install the update to either use or don't use cellular data. The next change they've updated has to do with the new iPhones they showed off today, the new iPhone SE and new colors for the iPhone 13 Pro and 13. So on Apple's website, you can see here they had some new studio displays with the new Mac Studio, new iPad Air and iPhone SE, as well as a new 13 Pro with this wallpaper. So there's a new wallpaper included for the green iPhone 13 and 13 pro, and there will be different wallpapers for the SE once that's released. But if you go into your settings, we'll go back. Then we go to wallpaper under wallpaper, choose new wallpaper. And you can see under live, we have a new green wallpaper. So we have a new animated green wallpaper that they've included with this update. So that's something new. And then we also have sort of a standard version that doesn't move at all. Now, one thing that they've changed that's huge for a lot of people is the ability to use a mask with face ID, but without using an Apple watch, this is available for the iPhone 12 and newer. And I wanted to show you how it works. So first go to your settings, then go down to face ID and passcode, tap on that, then enter your passcode. And you'll see we have the option for face ID with a mask. It says one pair of glasses added. So you can add pairs of glasses as well and tap add glasses. And you have that option here also. So it says using face ID while wearing a mask works best when it's set up to recognize each pair of glasses you wear regularly. Face ID with a mask doesn't support sunglasses. Now, typically it means polarized sunglasses. Sometimes it will work with sunglasses, but if it's polarized, the face ID sensors can't really pick up enough detail around your eye for that information. So you can add glasses as well and then just set it up. So it says your face must match the existing face ID appearance. Try again. And there we go. And it recognizes it just like normal. And now it's set up for with glasses as well. So now we can put on a mask and it will work. So if I place a mask on and unlock it, now I have the iPhone 10 here, so you can see I'm wearing a mask. If I lock the phone, unlock it, it lock unlocks just like normal, even though I'm wearing a mask and glasses. So you'll see again, it unlocks easily. Again, this is just for iPhone 12 and newer, unfortunately. Within this update, Apple has included 37 new emoji. Now this is to bring it up to Unicode version 14 standards. Apple does not come up with the emoji. They simply just add them to the OS. And so you can see them here. There's 37 new ones, everything from an X-ray to bubbles, an ID card to crutches, a battery. You'll see different things here as well. Different faces, a melting face in different ways. Your palm is faced up or down and more. So you have all of these different emoji. If you want to use those, those of course, with different skin variations or color variations as well. So all of that has been updated in this update, and this carries across to iPad and Mac as well. 
Now, the next thing is under Siri, we have a new voice. So if we go into our settings and then we go to Siri and search and then under the Siri voice, you'll see we have American five now. So we have five American voices. So let me play that so you can hear it. We'll tap on this one more time. I'll turn the volume up again. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And that's opposed to the original Siri voice. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. So that's been updated as a new option. There are no other options within the other voices as well so far. Now, something they've added we've been wanting for a very long time has to do with iPad and universal control. So I wanted to show you that. So you need an iPad and a Mac or multiple Macs to do this. Universal control allows you to control not only your Mac with its own keyboard and trackpad, but you can drag it across to other devices as well. As I drag it across to my iPad, you'll see now I'm controlling the iPad pad with the trackpad from my MacBook. This works across two Macs or three Macs up to three devices. So an iPad and another Mac and another Mac, you can use that. So it allows you to go back and forth. You can use the keyboard or trackpad or mouse, and it works back and forth from either device now. So now that they're connected, you just have to be on the same network nearby and on the same iCloud account. And it just easily goes between the devices. And maybe you want to drag a file or document. You can do that, drag it from the Mac over to You'll see here, well, I lost it for a moment. We'll drag it from the Mac over to the iPad and maybe place it in files. So you have that option if you want to do that. Again, the keyboards work as well as the mouse or trackpad or whatever you want to use. You can even use a third party trackpad or maybe a Microsoft mouse. All of those will work across multiple devices once they're connected. And those options are turned on by default. So there are settings for them, but they should just work. A feature they've added if you're using a magic trackpad that's really nice is the ability to adjust the keyboard brightness from Control Center. So you just need to add it to Control Center. You can do that under your settings and then go to Control Center. You'll see keyboard brightness there if you're using a magic trackpad. And then we go to Control Center, you'll see the icon. If I turn off the light, it'll sense that the light's off and give you the option to adjust it. So you can adjust the keyboard brightness up or down. Once we turn the light back on, it realizes that the light's on and no longer allows you to adjust it. So it's sort of a smart feature, but also great to have it easily accessible in Control Center. Within settings, there's a new option within sound. So if you go to settings and then sound, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see fixed position volume controls. When it's enabled, it says the volume up and down buttons will remain in a fixed position. When off, the buttons will dynamically change depending on the orientation of your iPad. So this can be helpful. Maybe you're watching some content and you wanna change the volume for that content when you rotate to landscape versus portrait, you can do that now. So it's just a new option they've added with 15.4. Within Safari, they've updated the option for translation languages. So if we go into Safari, you'll see here's the French version of Apple. Tap on the little menu here and we can translate this to English. They've added Italian and traditional Chinese. So if you have those languages set, they've added those two additional languages for the translation option. If you use the news app, they've updated this as well to help with enhancing audio discovery within the news app itself. So you'll see here under the today view, we have some audio options. Options. So play now and we can listen to those, listen to the latest news. We also have audio here, of course, with all audio stories, sports and recently played. So this has been enhanced within news. Within shortcuts, they've updated this as well. If we go into shortcuts, within shortcuts, maybe we create a shortcut. We now have the option to get tags from reminders. So this is a new option where we can search by the tag from within a reminder to create a shortcut to get what we're looking for. They've also added the support of a new feature. So if we go to automations, maybe you have a personal automation set up. Once you have that set up, you'll see it says when CarPlay connects, and then we have the option to ask before running. If we turn this off, it now says don't ask before running. Whenever this automation is triggered, it will perform actions on your behalf without asking first. I think this is a great enhancement. We want to hit don't ask. Now it will just run these without asking and run seamlessly and automatically. You can also have it notify you when run as well. Turn that on and you have that additional option within shortcuts.
Within settings, there's a change to emergency SOS. So we go to settings, go to emergency SOS, and you can see by default, it has call withhold turned on. This is now the default method of using emergency SOS. And it says, if you press and hold the side and volume buttons, the emergency SOS slider appears. If you continue to hold them, a countdown begins and an alert sounds. When the countdown ends, iPhone calls emergency services. You can still use call with five presses, but they've changed it to now make call withhold default. There's a new widget in this update as well. Well, so if we go over to widgets, you can see that we have add your Apple card in wallet and there's a new wallet widget that will tell you your current balance and more. So this is added. If you want to use it, it's available. Of course, it's not set up on this device because it shares private information, but either way it's available. If you want to try that out within podcasts, they've updated that as well. So if we go into podcasts, the first time you go into this, you'll see a new splash screen, but if you go into your library and then maybe find a different podcast that has a ton of different seasons. You can actually sort by the season. Now you'll see the season here and then you can see season 12 and then all the different episodes underneath that. So they've given you some new sort options within podcasts. If we go into the magnifier, they've updated this as well within the magnifier. You'll see, we now have a camera icon and under the camera icon, if we haptic press or 3d touch, depending on the device you have, we have some new options that say auto, close up or front. So this has been updated with some new icons here as well that look a little bit nicer, but we have that option here so we can use that again. We can switch it to front and now we can use the magnifier on the front of the camera or the front camera as well, or macro specifically. So it's great that they've given those options. If you go into your settings, scroll all the way down to TV, under TV, scroll down a little bit more and you'll see up next display. This is a new option that shows either a still frame or poster art in the TV app. So let me show you what that looks like. So currently it's set to still frame. So if we go out of this, go into the TV app, your last played episodes show here, and it's a still frame from within that app or from within that show. If we switch to poster art, go back, it switches to the poster art for the show you're watching. So again, if I go back to settings, still frame, it will switch back. So give it just a moment. Now we're back to still frame. So a small option, but it's something they've updated. The stocks app gets a small update. So if we go into stocks at the bottom, we have business news, and then you'll see individual stories and each story now has three dots for a menu tap on the three dots and it says share story, copy link, or save to Apple news. These options were available before, but you had to go into an individual article in order to share it. Now you can do it directly from the headline or the main page of articles. Keychain gets a small update as well. So under your settings, Let's go back here to the main page. And if you go down to passwords, it's updated within keychain. They've actually updated this so that when you're entering a password on a website, it will no longer let you save it without entering a username. So you'll need to be able to enter that where sometimes before it would actually allow you to enter it without a username. And then it wouldn't be as easy to enter your password automatically later on. They've also added the option for add notes. So you can now add a note to the password. And this is just a test password I made for this video, but you'll see this is a test password. And then you can leave a note within the password and it syncs across all your devices. So it's a nice little change. If you need something specific that you need to remember about that login. Now to go along with security, Apple has updated air tags when you add one to show a new message. Now I took a screenshot of this when I added it and you'll see it says air tag is linked to your Apple ID. AirTag is intended solely to track items that belong to you. Using AirTag to track people without their consent is a crime in many regions of the world. AirTag is designed to be detected by victims and to enable law enforcement to request identifying information about the owner. So it's just a new message explaining that they're sort of what they're supposed to be used for and what you shouldn't use them for. And also you can see here some more information where it says precision finding, play a sound, notify when left behind, and it gives you the option to view it in the find my app. So that's been updated there as well. Now, if we go into find my, they've updated that a little bit also. So within find my, if you tap on the me tab, you'll see at the bottom, it now says edit location name, customize, find my notifications and customize tracking notifications. So we have better granular or more granular control over our notifications with this update. And they've also made that apparent within settings within settings. If we go to notifications under notifications, if we scroll down to where there's find my, there used to be a couple different options here. They've now removed one of them and changed it to tracking notifications. So there's a new icon and we have a separate option for tracking notifications. And this will give you a notification based off of your air tag being tracked or 
maybe someone having an, an air tag nearby that you weren't aware of. So it should give you better information based on that. And you have more control over the settings. Apple has also updated the health app so that you can add vaccination records within the EU. So that's something that's new. And they've also added some changes within notes. So they've added a new feature in notes. So if you're in a new note, and you tap the little camera icon, you can now scan text. They've sort of broken this apart where it says choose photo or video, take photo or video, scan documents, and scan text. They've also updated the same thing within reminders. So if we go to create a new reminder, we have the same camera icon, but it looks a little bit different this time around. It says scan text, scan documents, take a photo, but we have some nice icons to go along with it. There's also new mail options if you have iCloud Plus to set up a custom domain. So if we go into our name here at the top and then tap on iCloud, and you can see at the top, it says custom email domain with an iCloud plus subscription. You can send and receive email using a custom domain. So that's something they've added in this update. SharePlay has a small update as well. If we go into music and then tap on the three dots, you can see the SharePlay icon has been updated as well as a few others here. If we tap on SharePlay, we can SharePlay that. And we also have a new logo within the fitness app and other apps that are third party if you want to use Fitness Plus with maybe someone else. So if we go into fitness, maybe tap on one here, give it just a moment, tap on the three dots in the upper right, give it a second, and you'll see it says SharePlay. So we have a new icon and it just looks a little bit different. It's been refreshed and it looks a little nicer than it did before. Additionally, you may see some different notifications the first time you go into different applications such as notes, and it will say things like keep up with your shared notes. And you'll see this in the wallet app as well. The first time you go in just sort of a new notification style that it's letting you know, Apple resolved some issues in this update as well. However, they did not mention the storage bug specifically. However, that does seem to be resolved. So if you go to general and then iPhone storage, it seems to load nice and fast. Now, everything from iOS to system data and more, and it seems to work across Across all devices. So that's a good sign. They also didn't mention the pink display issue, but many people said that was fixed in earlier betas and they haven't mentioned the issue with music where it would cause additional CPU usage when streaming music. However, I haven't seen usage in my battery usage for the past few days and it seems to be resolved. Now they did fix an issue with the keyboard where maybe you're typing, you type the word hello and accidentally it would place a period in between some of the letters that has been resolved in this update. Also, if you're using the news widget with the today view, they've resolved that as well. So I have the today view here. If maybe you tap on one of the articles, sometimes it just wouldn't open properly when tapped. So you tap on it here. It seems to open right up where it didn't before. Also, some people were having issues with photos and videos, not syncing properly to iCloud photo library that has been resolved. I've actually heard about that from a few of you. They've also fixed the accessibility feature that could quit unexpectedly within books. If you're using speak screen accessibility. So that's something if you're using books that has been resolved. Also, if you're using live, listen, maybe you have AirPods connected and you're using the live listen feature. This sometimes wouldn't turn off when you switched it off in the control center that has been resolved in this update. Now, additionally, there are 12 known issues that still remain in the notes, which I thought was a bit surprising, but they're still working on it. Things such as signing into iPads are limited to apps in the beta threat accessories may not work. Purchasing or downloading content from the iTunes store again may sometimes fail in the TV app. So they tell you to read reboot and try that again. So there's a few issues still going on in this that they still have to resolve, but they haven't had anything major. It seems as far as that goes, as far as Apple's digital ID and other changes that we expected, we haven't seen that yet. We do expect that in the future with digital ID to roll out. At least we thought it would in February, but it seems like it may have been delayed a little bit between different states and Apple. Other than the Apple digital ID, many of us are waiting for them to allow Apple pay through using the back of your phone with just a credit card. We haven't seen that in this update yet, although the code is still there. Now, additionally, there are security updates in this particular update. We'll know more about those when it releases to the public, but we can expect quite a few of those as well. And as far as if you should install this update, well, if you're on a beta, definitely install it already. However, if you're wanting to try it and you're on 15.3.1 and you installed a beta profile as a beta tester, you could try it out and see what it's like. However, I would recommend you have a background backup 
all the time, just in case something goes wrong and you need to restore with a computer, you can't go back without a computer. So just make sure you have those things available if you wanted to try it out. But if you're trying to resolve a specific issue, I may give it a few days. I'll do a follow up, of course, and we'll talk about what it's like and if batteries improved and more. As far as battery life overall, let's take a look at that and we'll go to battery. There we go. Battery health on this phone is 100% still. And as far as battery life on the beta, it's been very hit or miss. Typically when we go from a beta to a final version or release candidate, it seems to improve. And so far we have three hours and 33 minutes of screen on time, four hours and 12 minutes of screen off time. And that's just today. So that's a little odd since it said music was playing, but yesterday, again, was about 50% battery usage with similar usage, three hours and three and a half hours of screen on time. So it really varies, but the good thing is performance seems to be great. Overall stability seems to be good, especially in this update. And the iPhone 6S plus, for example, seems to be just fine. So if you're using this, maybe you're going into music, give it just a moment to load. It connects. And in general, it seems to be nice and stable. The overall heat of the device also seems to be pretty good. It was quite hot after installing and it did take a while to install. So don't be concerned if that's what you see. Apple monitors and regulates the temperature, but it did get a bit warm. So as far as when to expect iOS 15.4's release to the public, Apple says it will be out next week. So on the Apple newsroom, they're announcing the new event that we had earlier today with all of the new products. And they're saying with next week's release of iPad OS 15.4 and Mac OS 12.3. So all of the updates that we have today in RC form should be out next week. As far as what day that is, they haven't said specifically, but I would expect typically on Monday or Tuesday, we should see those releases with the new products coming out later in that week. So we have some new pre-orders on the Friday or on Friday, the 11th with them actually releasing on the 18th. So we should see something in the early part of next week. And then we'll move on to iOS 15.5 betas and much more. So of course I'll have a video with all of the additional features. There are actually a few more features I didn't mention in this video as well. Small things that Apple didn't mention either that I'll mention in the final version version with all of the new features. And also be sure to look out for the follow-up video where I go over battery life performance as far as bugs and things like that and much more later this weekend. So that's everything with iOS 15.4 RC and we could see an RC too. We've seen that in the past, but we're not really sure just yet. So we'll have to see what Apple does as far as that goes. Now, as far as anything else, if you found anything I haven't mentioned in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.